question is from More Jojo. Why is the compete and cheat mentality with food so common among bodybuilding athletes? Do you think athletes in other sports have a better relationship with food than bodybuilders? Okay, so so great, great, great question. Also not fair. Okay, so <laughs> so I'll explain why, okay? If we're going to compare bodybuilders to any other space in terms of uh, you know food relationships, you can't compare bodybuilders to athletes. Bodybuilders are judged on how they look, not how they perform. Now compare bodybuilders to models. Okay, look at models, look at bodybuilders. What you find is a similar pathology. Yeah, yeah almost identical with oh, yeah. nutrition. Very, very similar. The problem is uh, two things. One, bodybuilding attracts people who tend to have insecurities with how they look. But forget that for a second. If you're hardcore about bodybuilding, you are competing in a sport that is basing everything on how you look. Athletes, on the other hand, sure, especially if you're professional, how you look is kind of important for sponsorships. But really, it's about how you perform. Yeah. It's all about performance. The reason why athletes have a better general, and I'll, I'll agree with that, I think athletes have a generally a better relationship with food than bodybuilders, is because it's all based on performance. This is why doing a program like MAPS Powerlift for somebody who has body image issues is brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. It takes your body, your mind off of how you look. And is that going to benefit your relationship to food? Yes. Will it completely fix it? No, there's more work to be done. But it will change the focus. But if you're always, imagine that, always, it's always about how you look, how you look, how you look. You get it on a stage. It has nothing to do with how much you lifted, how strong you are. It doesn't even matter how big you measure with your biceps or whatever. It's how good you looked on stage. Yeah. That's what fucks with people. I can also make the argument coming from an athletic uh, sort of background that – it would behoove an athlete to kind of go through uh, the discipline and dedication it takes to to manage your macronutrients to figure out you know the best uh, formula for you specifically in your body. Uh, besides the the performance aspect of it, just the the knowledge of it to to know uh, you know how your body reacts uh, and dive deep into nutrition, but. Uh, again, like I think the the other is more common. Well, mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily think it's a, a a better or worse relationship. It's a different relationship. That's what it is. I mean, it, it could be just as detrimental to your health on both. I've sure. seen I've had uh, athletes that um, you know they they look you know aesthetically okay, but they eat like shit, and you cannot think that. That's not affecting their insides. And sometimes I think that can be, it's like the skinny fat person. I used to always tell my clients that were like really o overweight and, um, you know, they put on fat so easy. I used to tell them, hey, this is a blessing in disguise. Your body tells you when you're, you're not eating well mm. and it shows you. I've had many clients that have a lot of issues going on inside because they're skinny fat, because they don't put on a ton of extra weight. So you see that relationship very similar in your, you know, your athletic people like that are in sports like basketball baseball football they they're burning so many calories that they get away yeah. with i think there's just a lot more ignorance right and, yeah and it's I, a different relationship that's what i saw like i mean we're going to buffets we're going to like as many calories as i mean yes it is like what's going to do best for me performance wise on the field but then the association of uh consuming and buy like whatever it is like it doesn't matter the quality of it it was just a matter of like getting it in and you know performing and then that i was going to see what was going to happen well you guys have trained uh ex nfl and major league baseball play i mean i have and a lot of them are in, in terrible shape because they were so used to always practicing, always playing games that they never had to watch their diet. And right. then now yeah, once they, that slows down, oh yeah, they, these athletes are fucked. Yeah. They're, they're, the same behaviors they've had for 20 years of their life playing sports, they no longer can have, and they're completely lost. So, and that's a very bad relationship too with food. So it's, but it's different, right? The, the bodybuilders, uh, I would rank it. I, I mean, you can definitely rank it in terms of what's probably a worse place to be versus, you know, where it's easier. But you're right. I mean, when you're in season uh, versus off season for performance for athletes, that can definitely happen. It's worse. So, I, you know, if I were to rank these, I would say this. The worst is basing uh, your diet on how you look, which would be bodybuilders, models, that kind of stuff. The second one would be weight, how mm -hmm. much you weigh. So if you look at the sports where athletes – tend to have the biggest disparities between 
when they're competing when they're not. Look at the sports that have a weight class. Boxers, wrestlers, Wrestling, yeah. MMA yeah. fighters. Those guys, now, way different. I, I can make a case to challenge that, yeah. though. I can make a case to challenge that and say the opposite is true. Uh, because at least the bodybuilders, although they're driven by insecurities the way they look and they have a poor relationship because of those reasons, at least they've learned the tools on how to control their body weight up and down and what's a good amount of calories. They definitely are more informed. Right. They're more, sure. They're way more informed. That's for sure. Because I've had professional athletes that looked amazing when they were professional athletes, but now that they're They 40, don't know how many calories. Yeah, they, have, they, don't, they don't yeah. know what a fucking protein no is, a carb is. They, don't yeah. know what, they didn't know what anything was because they didn't have to worry about any of that. All they cared about was playing their sport. And so they're like teaching a child how to eat correctly. Yeah, so yeah. at least with a bodybuilder, or, or let's say, let's say I get both of these X, right? X bodybuilder, ex-pro athlete, they're both 45 years old, they both had bad relationships with food and now I have to work on them. It's just a different thing I'm working on. With the bodybuilder, I'm they understand, when I tell them macros and all that so that they it computes very well with them, but then I have to get them to d detach from this insecure thing that they were driven by for so many years where the athlete you know, they may, they may not have some sort of an attachment to the way they look. They don't give a shit about that, but they're clueless on how to eat correctly. Oh, so, they have no idea yeah, on, yeah. on uh, ex-athletes have no idea on proper portions. Right. You know, I, I'll train like these ex-female athletes and they'll be like, hey, this is how I used to always eat, you know, when I, and I'm like, well, show me, like, what is right. a typical meal? And I look, I'm like, that's a massive meal. You were eating that when you were training twice a day for and then you know, the answer water is always more hit cardio to right. make up for it. Yeah, right. That's, so that's I could so, so I could make the case that sure you know both of them it's, they're they're different relationships. So I don't think that uh, one is worse than the other. I think uh, that they both uh, could. And they both could have okay relationships too. I don't want to beat up on all athletes or beat up on all yeah, we're bodybuilders. Speaking general, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but if you know, if we were if I were to say that I had two people in the you know, middle age that were ex athlete and then was an ex bodybuilder, both had poor relationships, I couldn't say I, I wouldn't say that one is worse than the other. They're just different challenges as a coach it's that like I have to overcome. It's like the difference between hyper focus and no focus. Yeah. You know, like too much focus yeah. and obsession. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a spectrum. Or, or none at all. Right. Um, no, that's a good point. And then the, the, what I what I said earlier about a little bit of a what, what you, you might call a self selection bias kind of plays a role. There's probably more. I, I mean, I would I, I could bet money that there's more body image insecurities going into bodybuilding sure. physique bikini sure that's mm -hmm. why a lot of people become you know bodybuilders and yeah less yeah. in terms of sports like less people are like oh i'm gonna go play basketball because i'm super insecure about being skinny or right, or, right. or fat or whatever